Hi everyone, welcome back to the Dahlia Society. My name is Kristen. Today you're watching Friday Sews. Cheers. For all of you that haven't met Meg before, Meg is my border collie. She's the love of my life. She's five years old. She's very energetic. Um, she, she's basically my sixth child, so I usually always try and feature her in some videos here and there because she does have a big fan club out there. It's really warm out here today. I've got a pineapple juice, some ice. It's about 34 degrees today, so lovely and warm. I'm still wearing my summery dresses. I know a lot of you guys are in freezing snowy conditions, but maybe there's a bit of summer inspiration here for you for the next few months if you like to sew a season ahead. I'm here to talk about bit of sewing and a bit of life, what's been happening this week. If you're not familiar with Friday Sews, Friday Sews is a special hashtag that a lot of the sewing community are really getting into now. It's fantastic. Uh, I just think it's a great way to catch up and see what everyone's been making through the week. So what have I been up to this week? Well, I have done a fair bit of sewing. You might have just seen my recent video with Valentine's inspiration, a bit of romantic style, lovely dresses on there, a bit of lingerie. I have made a few things this week. I've actually got one thing in the process. I'll show you what I've made so far. You've seen the Valentine's episode, you would have seen my Sicily slip dress. This was an interesting one because I'd seen it last summer. It was very, very famous all over Instagram. And I always thought, a bit too old to wear things that are so strappy maybe a bit on the sexier side and then i thought hey i'm the one telling everyone you can wear what you want wear what you feel like wearing what makes you feel good and i was nearly going to make the one with a wider strap because i do like to wear a strapped bra um, but i decided to go for the classic style slip with the cow neck and i've got to say i fell in love with it absolutely love the style of it I think I didn't look too bad after all in it and I do have got to wear a strapless bra with it. of course it's the only downside but I think it really is well worth it when you see that kind of vintage almost glamorous style bias cut dress um, yeah it's really lovely and I just need someone to wear it out now so maybe for Valentine's Day next week we might actually go out and wear it somewhere <laughs> So I really loved that you know, spotlight fabric. I couldn't find it online. I actually bought it in store. So the fabric was not linked. I know a lot of you wanted to try and find it online, but sometimes when fabrics are fairly new, I think spotlight takes a little while to get the um, you know, online store sort of side of things set up. So it can be a bit more difficult to find the fabric. But if you do go into spotlight to find it, it is in where all the satins are. There's a section where usually wear crepes and more um, special occasion kind of fabrics will be and you will see it there. Do you need to have some kind of either loop turner or bodkin for this? The straps are you know quite narrow to turn inside out um, but really the dress was a very simple make, very easy and I just loved um, is it the simplicity. Sometimes when you want to show a feature fabric um, you need a style like this to set it off so love the dahlias and a lot of you love those uh, the print on that dress as well so very very happy with that got to watch this weather because I tend to burn quite easily so I'm in the shade here if it's a little bit dappily I apologize for that but I think it's just nice to kind of let you feel the summer breeze hopefully you can kind of imagine if you're cold there and warm you up but here in Australia of course we're in our summer season so we're all loving this nice warm weather the second thing I've made this week is a lovely little linen top now I found this linen in the remnant section spotlight. This fabric was around last year and of course uh, I didn't buy any back then but when I saw it I just thought that will make a really nice little boxy style top. So this uh, was 1.25 meters so it wasn't a great deal so you've got to make sure that you get the right pattern to fit that fabric in. Um, and so I've decided to make it in the I am patterns I am Jane top. Now I've made the I am Joy. I think last year it was a little slight kind of a, a boat neck with a little curve at the top, a little bit, a bit of a puff sleeve. And this is the other pattern. If you buy it in the pack, you get the I am Joy and I am Jane together, or you can just buy it on its own. So it's a simple style boxy top with that kind of dolman sleeve, grown on sleeve there, and a little V interface V at the front. Now the V is quite low. It is a little bit lower than I would have expected it to be but I can just get away with it, I think, uh, without wearing a cami. Uh, it is more of a squared at the bottom kind of V, so really interesting shape, but really love it on. I'll put some pics up so you can see that. 
It was just the right amount of fabric too. So I think uh, I made the um, second largest size. I think iron patterns are in the process of updating their size range. I th yeah, it's it's roomy enough. It's quite got quite a bit of uh, ease in the top and just a nice little straight hem across. But yeah, a really nice little top. I think these kind of boxy tops are fantastic to put on with a pair of um, jeans or three-quarter jeans, which is what I love wearing those in-between days. So love that kind of um, bold print. My favourite colour, that lilac with the turquoise. I think it looks really stunning to print together. So nice and bright and cool top to wear for summer. I'm in the process of doing some shearing. If you haven't done that before, it's quite easy. There are so many tutorials online for that as well. You just need to make sure your bobbin has shearing elastic and when you wind it on, you have to have that tension right so it's just pulled slightly so that when it actually sews, it gathers that fabric up. So, so far so good. I'm making the Sophia dress by Victory Patterns and this beautiful viscose fabric I purchased from Potter & Co back Few, uh, probably about three months ago now. I uh, love this. I think it's called Valerie. It's a Turkish viscose print. But I had to try and hurry it up and make it for summer because before I know it, summer will be over. And this just speaks summer to me. So I really think it'll come up beautiful in that dress. Um, it has got a few options for tops, peplum tops, and you can either do the cap, the puff, or the longer kind of puff sleeve. So I'm going for the shorter puff sleeve with a little fill around the bottom and the shearing is coming up really nicely it's um yeah it's only been half made the dress so really really happy with how it's coming up so that will hopefully be done for you very shortly too Sophia dress also has a great extended size range as well and I think the top would be a perfect little top to wear with a pair of jeans as well if you're wanting to head into maybe um you know your spring or autumn wear depending where you are in the world I think these kind of tops are great to wear with jeans for that in between weather I've got a new episode coming next week. I'm in the process of getting that filmed. I've got a brand new fabric shop to show you guys. It's a new Australian online fabric store. You're going to love uh, what they've got to offer. So that is coming very shortly. And there's also a little competition in there for you guys to win some fabric. I think you're going to really love the fabrics I've got to show you. And you're going to love this new shop as well. The only downside is that it is only for Australian and New Zealand as far as postage goes. They're not doing worldwide shipping, but um, I think it's really great for um, Aussie and New Zealand viewers to be looked after. We do have to pay a lot more for postage when things um, are sent from overseas. So it is nice to have a lot of new fabric stores to offer that postage and the competition as well will be just for Aussie and New Zealand viewers so apologies to everywhere else but you will understand if you know how expensive it is to have things sent from Australia to the rest of the world uh, not only with the delays at the moment with the actual cost of postage can be really really steep so apologies for that some patterns on sale there is still the ellie and mac sale running as i'm filming this i have purchased a couple of their patterns to show you because i know that you guys love their patterns uh, so there is a few things coming for that so with my fabric and plans episode coming out next week i think you're going to be really excited at some uh, new patterns that i have haven't made yet and i'm really excited to get those happening i'm going to talk about a couple of challenges that are happening over on instagram uh, in the next couple of weeks will be quite a few exciting challenges the one that's running at the moment that i'm loving is charlene from so so dressmaking has got a joyful sleeves hashtag if you're making anything with a beautiful dramatic uh, lovely sleeves to make sure you add your hashtag joyful sleeves i think that's a lovely challenge and she's made quite a few beautiful um, big dramatic sleeve garments there over on her channel i had a lot of you say you are interested in me making some big four patterns um big four patterns i do have quite a lot in my stash i tend to favor indie patterns as far as fit goes but I am interested in quite a few new paper patterns that are coming out. Now, us being over in Australia, we do get the patterns a season later than you guys in the Northern Hemisphere. So your new patterns coming out for things like McCall, for example, won't hit our stores till probably another season later. So it is a bit annoying. We have to wait a bit longer for that. But there are quite a few paper patterns that I have got my eye on to make. A lot that are really, really big on Instagram at the moment. There's quite a few McCall's patterns I know that are really taking off. So I've got a couple on my list. I've got a couple of blouse patterns as well on my list there too. Another challenge that I've spoken about recently for 
Valentine's Day is the Pigeon Pink and Red Party. Now, Pigeon Wishes is actually Megan and she and Gabby had a podcast, a Stitches Brew, that was on for quite a little while there. So you may want to catch up on the episodes if you haven't listened to them before. But Megan is heading the Pigeon Wishes Pink and Red Party for Valentine's Day for the sewing community. Make something in pink and red, hashtag it, and join in the party. And you'll see on Instagram all the other makers, what they've made. And pink and red, a beautiful combination. It's one of those combinations you don't see that often with fabric. The last challenge that I have mentioned before as well is Frugalissima, who is Sam, and also Ruan, who is Yorkshire Sewing Girl over on YouTube. If you haven't followed their channels, I will link them below so you can head over and follow along with them on their YouTube sewing journey. They're having a special challenge. They're running so many YouTube sewers that are really taking part in this challenge. I think it's fantastic. They've got so many people on board. And what it is, it's called Frugal Frocks. So you're looking at finding a free pattern. You have to use fabric from your stash. And we are all making a frock uh, from that challenge and presenting it on the 31st of March. So you'll see all the YouTube bloggers um, showing maybe what they're sewing, maybe giving a few details uh, in their own individual episodes as well. So all presented on the 31st of March. I think it's a fantastic way of using up some stash fabric and also not spending a cent on having a free pattern. Frugalisma, if you don't know, Sam's YouTube channel is all about free offers, free patterns, um, yeah, a lot of discount codes and bargains. She really does a lot of work there trying to find some great offers to show for content for her viewers. That's a really great channel to subscribe to. So I've embarked on a little bit of a fitness routine this week. A new channel that I have been watching on YouTube is Up To The Beat Fitness. Now, if you know me recently, I've just um, started some medication. I do suffer from colitis. I think there are a lot of people out there that suffer from chronic conditions, so I'm not alone there. Um, the medication, luckily for me, has worked really, really well. I haven't had any episodes for about a month and a half now, so for me, that is it's just amazing so i'm feeling really fantastic um and in the past it's prevented me from doing a lot of exercise i find even sometimes going for a walk i'd be in really bad pain um and the problem is to help with symptoms for colitis uh, or other conditions as well you need to move you need to exercise to sort of let yourself feel better exercise plays a really important role in uh, making yourself feel good and gives you energy so to have a condition that kind of prevented that it's, it really has been um, really hard um, now in my younger years I actually did a lot of dancing I did dancing for over 20 years and that was jazz ballet and tap and things like that so I absolutely love dancing I'm not big on gymnasiums I'm not a I don't like running I don't mind walking but to me dancing is a way of keeping fit and it's fantastic fun because you don't feel like you're exercising but actually it makes you feel fantastic so I found a great YouTube channel uh, Australian lady called Gina Gina B and her channel is called up to the beat fitness and it is for all levels of fitness and all ages and I think she started the program a, a lot of years ago because she's actually a dancing background she was a ballroom dancer like Latin American style dancing and she was teaching a lot of elderly people to dance and she found that it was it was hard because while she was doing a lot of lessons there was a lot of the older people sitting and watching that couldn't uh, physically get up and move so she's designed a program um, for a lot of people to do things like exercising in their chairs and that kind of thing so it's really great for all levels but her channel is all about moving um, it really reminds me of back in the 80s things like step Reebok um, your aerobics the Jane Fonda style workouts but very low impact and very beginner friendly so if you're like me and you haven't exercised for some time or if you've been in lockdown and you've let the whole exercise routine go because you can't get out the house gyms are closed things like that um, it's something you can do in your living room you can wear what you want as long as you're comfortable and you have a bit of space to move around most importantly it's fantastic fun because you don't feel like you're exercising until you build up that sweat and you realize you may have done over 2,000 steps with her walking program and she uses some fantastic 80s style music, um, all kinds of music really. Um, but the program I loved was there was a 30 minute kind of like jazzercise, used all 80s inspired music. So I tell you, I felt like I was back in 1986 as a 14 year old in my local dancing hall. It just, all the moves came back. Uh, it was fantastic fun. So it is a great way of moving the body 
without feeling like you're exercising so if you can make it fun it doesn't seem as daunting and I think the hardest bit about exercising as everyone knows is to make a start because once you do you feel like a million dollars it really helps yeah if you're looking for an exercise program that's fun and it's low impact as I say for all ages and really can be tailored to any type of fitness ability as well so I will link her channel you can head over and have a look at her exercise program and yeah have a bit of fun while you're moving around the lounge room as we all know too sitting and sewing sometimes you can your posture can be affected if you're not sitting up nice and straight and you spend a lot of time in the sewing chair it can be really hard for the lower back as well so trying to balance things out a bit there and um yeah i'm feeling great so from meg and i that is all for today for friday so i hope you've enjoyed that and i will be back next week with a new episode all about my plans and my new fabric that has accumulated and a new fabric store to tell you all about too which is very exciting so stay safe keep sewing and bye for now